Hello friends, I am Chandi Charan and you are watching Technological Logic. In today's video, I am going to discuss some interesting facts and figures about analog electronics and digital electronics. What are their practical differences? What exactly is analog electronics? What exactly is digital electronics? And how both are connected to each other? First of all, take a look that analog electronics is a, is a uh, older version of electronics where all the analog circuits are used. Now, what are those? Obviously, very simple components, diodes, transistors, capacitors, inductors, resistors, all the simple components uh, are fitted together to create analog circuits. <clears throat> now, what's the exact difference in digital? In digital itself, there is obviously the circuitry is uh, controlled by electrons. That means analog circuit is there, no doubt. But in digital, it is micro format. So, there is logic recognition. Here, a particular 1 and 0, 1 and 0 are rec recognized by the uh, controllers. Uh, some, uh, the, the most important part of analog circuit is uh, register, capacitor and transistor. In the same way, in digital electronics, the most important component is MOSFET, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. It's to a transistor, no doubt, but it has some special properties which distinguishes the analog circuit from the digital circuit. Well, I will dictate now the practical implications and practical differences between analog circuit and digital circuit. In older version of radios and TVs, you might might have seen uh, by breaking it either or by opening it through screwdriver that all uh, big, some bulky analog circuits were there. For example, a huge capacitor like this one, an inductor, very big one, and each and every component were almost analog. But nowadays, if you open your mobile, any mobile, you will simply find a dashboard, a motherboard that will be uh, sizing like this. And each and every component lied within that. So that's the difference. So there is compactness in digital. So what were the steps taken in order to convert any analog circuit to digital? And what are the benefits we have, uh, we have uh, got by transforming the analog circuits to digital? I will be describing that. Well, first of all, in analog circuit, uh, there is almost 90% action and uh, whatsoever is the functioning of analog circuit designing are controlled by electron flow. Electron, the amount of electron flowing, the frequency at which the electron flows through the circuit, through the capacitor, through the inductor, through the uh, diode, etc., any transistor are actually controlled, uh, sorry, actually control the whatsoever we require. For example, in order to detect any signal in a radio receiver, uh, you might have seen that a capacitor and inductor are coupled together to get a, a certain frequency from the air. So that is a tuning effect. You have to tune the, sp uh, the sp spatial amount of capacitance required and the amount, of spatial amount of inductance required in order to uh, resonate it at a particular frequency to catch the signal from the air and hence you can listen to the all India radios. But in nowadays, in a simple, very small mobile, you can uh, listen to beautiful and quite stereo effect sound. Uh, that too, without any confusion. So, so in digital, what practical difference is? It is compact, but it was compacted in what way? It contains transistor, obviously. The size of transistor has been reduced. A great rule given that each and every year the size of transistor is reducing in such a way that uh, that nobody can imagine what will be the what will what will what will be the predicted size of a, a particular transistor in next 50 years that is quite unimaginable for example if you take any digital logic circuit well in digital logic circuit you have logic gates well in logic gates it contains transistors so the whole motherboard it is containing uh, first of all logic gates inside that transistor inside that that means transistor in the form MOSFET metal oxide semiconductor Philip effect transistor quite tiny uh, quite uh, important and quite controlled so in analog transistor uh, you have to bias the transistors you have to uh, control and specify the amount and there is no accuracy perfect accuracy in digital transistor that is MOSFET you have quite accurate data for example, a uh, 16 GB pen drive you might have. What it contains? It obviously contains only MOSFETs. The spatial sequence and patterns in which 
millions and trillions of MOSFETs are connected together to control the data. So whatsoever we data need to store, that is stored in the form of ones and zeros. A special combination of 16, 32, 64 bit uh, from a word, from a nibble and everything. So that recognition, that recognition pattern is actually controlled by programs. The programs recognize that uh, in what format the data uh, data are available. For example, if two zeros and one zeros are consecut consecutively present in the uh, in the data, so it converts, it decodes what actually it means. So in digital circuit, for, uh, in practical means, uh, we have been using a lot of digital circuits nowadays. Almost, I think, uh, 80 to 90 percent of present circuits are digital. So what's the benefit? Obviously, it's compact, it's smaller in size, it le requires less amount of power and using a very logical and the most important thing, we can control the device once and many times using software. That means we, uh, we uh, first of all uh, make the device once digital and after putting special codes and special programs, we can control in what way it works. So that is the special feature of digital electronics. Well, the question arises, then in digital circuits, how actually the signals are achieved, signals are retrieved? Well, very simple answer. In analog, there were, were tuner and in digital, some logics. So in digital, in order to catch any digital signal, the signal itself is digital. But the most important point to consider is that the signal always travel in analogous form. For example, the signal might be digital, but while transferring it, while it might have been modulated using digital signals like ones and zeros, but while transferring it, you have to use analog signal. It may be like that uh, for a single bit one, in order to transfer a single one, it might have a constant sine wave. In order to uh, send a uh, single zero bit, it might have a, a cos wave, so like that. So ultimately it is analog signal which is transferring through the waves. So what actually happens inside your laptop, inside your mobile, it actually, there is actually a demodulator. It demodulates the signal, after demodulating it decodes. I mean it first of all generates the required ones and zeros that have been sent by the server and it decodes what actually it means. You might be amazing that if, you should know that if there were no decoder in any mobile or any laptop, all the pictures and my video would be all in the format ones and zeros. That will be quite uh, that mad. You would become mad to decode it. There is certainly a special requirement of a decoder in order to make it picture, video, etc. Well friends, uh, that was all about the basics of analog electronics and digital electronics. In my next video, I will be giving uh, some special description about the digital logic design. So if you liked my video, please like, uh, click on the like button and if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe because in this way, I will be providing a lot, a lot of technical videos. Thank you for watching.